Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to have a look at RCDs again, and more specifically, why it is that if you decided to, say, replace a socket in your house, uh, you might obviously go to the uh, consumer unit and uh, switch off the uh, relevant circuit like that. And, of course, you go to the socket and find there was no power there, and unscrew the front of it, of course, and just remove it. And uh, then you touch the uh, neutral and earth wires together, and what happens then is that the RCD in the fuse box will uh, switch off, and disconnect the entire house and plunging everything into total darkness, even though you thought you'd already uh, disconnected the circuit by switching it off there. So let's have a look at that and see why that usually happens. Now this is a fairly typical consumer unit. It's uh, an older one which has a single RCD here which covers all of the circuits within the house. Now you wouldn't normally fit one of these these days because uh, that's pretty inconvenient, so any fault uh, anywhere is likely to trip the RCD and disconnect the entire house, so uh, not actually uh, permitted anymore, but uh, even so it's still fairly common to have uh, one of these installed, and even some of the newer ones you're still going to have two RCDs, sort of one here doing half the circuits and one doing the rest, so uh, the same problem would apply there. So uh, say you wanted to place a socket for example, you would uh, obviously switch off the uh, RCD there for the uh, sockets, and you go to the socket and find there's no power there, so that's fine, and then you take the front off the socket, of course exposing the wires, and of course there's no power on any of those, but uh, touch the neutral and earth together, then the RCD trips off, cutting off the entire house. Now let's just have a look inside here and see why this is likely to happen. Now so there's no wiring in this one because uh, this is one that's been taken out, but uh, the power comes in over here, so you've got the uh, neutral in here and the line in there, and obviously goes through the RCD when it's on. Line just goes straight through and then it's connected along the bottom here, all common together, and then obviously through the appropriate circuit breaker, and then your circuit wiring would connect on the top here. So in the case of the socket one it would come out of here and obviously go off to the socket wiring. The neutral comes out of the bottom here on this black wire and just goes straight into the bar at the top here. And all of the neutrals from the circuits will connect into here, and I see there's a sufficient number of terminals here, one corresponding for each there, but they're all common together. And this link here just uh, joins the two together. In some circumstances you might want a uh, separate bar if there was uh, multiple RCDs fitted. And the uh, earth or uh, CPCs all go to the uh, single bar at the top here, and your incoming earth would connect on the end over there. So when you're switching off uh, over here, you obviously are disconnecting the uh, line or live power coming at the bottom. Obviously that's no longer connected, but uh, most importantly the neutral is still connected, and of course uh, the earth is still connected as well. And of course all of the uh, say neutrals for each circuit are all common together, so that neutral end at the socket you're replacing is actually connected through to every other neutral in the entire building, as is the earth wire of course. Again all the wires will go to the same bar, and therefore connect the whole lot together. Now what I've drawn here is the equivalent of what's inside the consumer unit, so I've got the RCD over here with the neutral and line coming in from the supply. Uh, the neutral just goes straight through and then connect onto that neutral bar at the top, and the line comes through onto the bar at the bottom, which then goes into the individual circuit breakers. Just got a couple here, but obviously you're going to have a whole row of those extending way over there. And the other bar at the top there for the earth, and again the incoming earth would connect uh, to one end of that. And the circuits uh, connect to the uh, three places, so in the example of that socket which you were taking off the wall and possibly replacing, the neutral would connect up to the neutral bar here, and then that will go off over to the socket. The earth of course would uh, also connect to the earth bar there, and again go over to the socket over there, and the line would come from the appropriate circuit breaker, say this one here, and again that would go up and go over to the socket over there. Now in this configuration if uh, one or more of these wires were accidentally shorted together nothing's actually going to happen because in this configuration there's no current flowing, there's no connection here, the circuit breaker is in the off position so no power goes through, and of course the other two are just sitting there, none of the other circuits are powered either, so there's no current flowing anywhere either in these wires or in fact any of the wires in the entire installation. So of course nothing will happen, it doesn't matter what you do with the ends of those. However, in the event you've only turned off one of the circuit breakers, of course there's going to be all kinds of other circuits and equipment attached to the rest of the system. So 
Let's just draw some of those in and see how that changes the situation. Now what I've just drawn here, I've just put a uh, lamp over here, or light bulb if you want, and it connects that to the extra circuit breaker there, so the line comes out through the light bulb, and the neutral of course just returns back to the neutral bar there. So if we were to uh, switch on the circuit breaker, of course there'll be a connection through here, and in the event of the RCD being on, of course, there'll also be a connection through there as well. So now power will come in from the supply via the uh, components here through the circuit breaker, obviously through the lamp there, and return to the neutral, which then comes back via the circuit breaker back to the supply. So current flowing this way and that way, but of course they're both going to be balanced because it's the same current flowing throughout that particular loop there. And of course the light bulb will uh, hopefully light up. Now the socket which uh, was up here with those just bare ends hanging out the wall now, still not actually on because uh, this circuit breaker is off, so uh, no power is going to be here and no current is actually going to be flowing in that particular wire. And of course these are just floating about in the middle of nowhere, so again no current flowing there. However, when the neutral and earth, say were shorted or touched together accidentally there, it's now created an additional path for some current to flow. Now, normally, of course, for the lamp, the current would flow via here, through here, and of course back to the neutral there, and back through this wire via the RCD like that. However, we've now got an additional connection here, going over to there, and effectively coming back to the earth there. And of course, neutral and earth are always connected together, either immediately behind the consuming on the service cutout, or even if not there, certainly back at the transformer. So some of the current coming back here to the neutral will obviously go via the RCD in the usual fashion. However, some of it is possibly going to go along this wire over here, and then find a path back to Earth here, which of course means the current flowing in the neutral there is going to be less than the current flowing in the line conductor. And of course that's going to cause the imbalance to be detected, and the RCD will switch off. Now whether this actually does trip the RCD or not entirely depends on how much load is actually on the rest of the system. So if there was no load at all this wouldn't happen. If there's a small load, possibly only one lamp, it might not happen because it all depends on the split of the current between the correct path here and then this other path which has been created effectively due to a fault between neutral and earth. But generally if the current flowing here is much larger then it's more likely that uh, the current will flow here in excess of the tripping current for the RCD. And to look at this in a bit of a simpler way, if we just take out the uh, extra socket there completely, what you're basically doing when those two wires connect together is effectively putting a link from here to here. So current will flow uh, via here, through here, through that circuit breaker as normal along the wires of the load here, and of course return here. And it's when it gets to this point that it will split, because some of it, of course, will go via that neutral in the proper path. But you've now created this extra path here, and of course some of the current is going to go that way, and of course the rest is actually going to go over here. And if this is, say, a 30 milliamp RCD, which it uh, generally would be, if you get, uh, say, more than so, or 30 milliamps or more going along this particular wire, and again, 30 milliamps is a very small amount of power, then it's going to trip the RCD, disconnecting the entire lot which of course is not what you want because it's going to get rather dark suddenly and uh, all kinds of other equipment is going to be turned off when you didn't want it to be. So look there at neutral earth faults and why just turning off a circuit breaker is not really good enough in terms of isolating a circuit before you're going to go working on it because though you may have uh, disconnected one of the conductors of course the uh, neutral and earth are still connected and if uh, neutral and earth get connected anywhere in the installation current is likely to flow along that path and cause an imbalance which the RCD of course will detect and cause it to uh, trip off. And the easy way to avoid this problem is not to just turn off here, obviously to turn off here, ideally remove the uh, conductor from the circuit breaker and also remove the corresponding neutral conductor from the neutral bar as well, so uh, therefore you've actually properly disconnected it. There's no danger of someone just coming along and uh, randomly turning it back on while you're working on the circuit and of course avoids the problem of uh, accidentally connecting the neutral and earth together. And that incidentally is the same reason why uh, it's really annoying and tiresome to have a single RCD covering the entire installation. 
because you only need a single fault somewhere, say between neutral and earth or even between uh, earth and line. A single fault anywhere in the installation will of course cause the entire lot to disconnect and if that fault remains you'll find you can't actually switch it back on again until you've located and removed the fault. And say with a system like this with say sort of a dozen circuits or more in it that could take an extremely long time and be exceptionally inconvenient. And though in some cases you can switch off all of the circuit breakers like that, switch on the RCD and then individually turn on the circuits until you find the one where the fault is, that only works if the fault is actually between line and earth. If it's between neutral and earth then you may well find that even though you've turned off half the circuits you can turn the RCD on initially but then switching on any of the circuits will actually cause it to trip anyhow because of course you're getting the current flowing through that neutral earth fault somewhere in this station and of course that imbalance is going to be there regardless of where power is actually being used. And say two units aren't generally fitted like this anymore because obviously that's a hugely inconvenient problem. The cheap way to do it is to have uh, two RCDs so effectively it divides it into two sections. The proper way is to have uh, RCBOs which are combined circuit breakers and RCDs in a single device and then you just have a row of those and of course the fault then only affects the single device rather than half your house. So until next time, thanks for watching.